All right, everyone, we're a couple minutes past the hour. I think it's uh, good to get started. Um, exciting presentation we have for everyone today, uh, both uh, Polar Racking and eCall Electric. Um, excited to show you uh, part of our partnership, um, our ground mount racking solution made for residential and light commercial applications. Um, so, uh, Jay, do you want to give some intro? Sure. Thanks, Jonathan. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, again, I'm, my name is Jay Johnson. I'm with eCall Electric. I'm the director of the renewable energy category of our business here at eCall. Um, happy to, uh, more than happy to be here today to uh, take part in this webinar with our strong partner, Polar Racking. Uh, we go back some years and I'm excited that uh, all of you are here to join us today. Uh, hopefully that all of you have, um, will enjoy the presentation and pick up some great information from it. Um, with that said, I won't go into too much detail other than eCall is a proud stocking partner of Polar Racking. Uh, you can reach out to me or any one of your specialists in, our other, in, in any of our six regions for that matter. So yeah, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions afterwards. And with that said, enjoy the presentation. I'll pass it back to Jonathan. Thank you, Jay. So I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of a background on our team here today for the uh, presentation. Uh, so first we have Mariano Gultierio. Mariano is our engineering manager. Um, he works on many of the projects, uh, managing many aspects of these projects from, you know, preliminary design work to actual execution of a project. Um, you know, anything that has to do with, you know, loading, sizing, uh, helps out in foundation design and so forth. So kind of all comes under his uh, umbrella and his wing of the, uh, of polar racking. Uh, Keith Roy, who's our construction manager extraordinaire. Uh, Keith is actually uh, in his truck, I believe in upstate New York. Is that right, Keith? Oh, he's, he's on mute, but uh, yeah, Keith is out in the field. Um, a lot of times helping with the installation of your projects, um, showing you kind of all the tricks uh, of our product, um, you know, sizing, measuring, um, you know, just making you more efficient and more successful in the field, um, you know, with our product line. So, so Keith is really um, the bridge between our engineering team and support in the field. And again, we'll help you build what we like to call those golden rows, the first rows of racking um, and giving you all that tricks of the trade to, to make you successful in your projects. And then of course, myself, Jonathan Mizraki, I'm the director of sales here at Polar Racking. Um, I manage the sales team. Um, you know, we, um, uh, been with the business for about a year and a half now uh, and working with uh, not only ground mounts, but also carports and single axis tracker product that we'll touch on just briefly. But uh, most of the presentation today, like I mentioned, is about ground mount in our core flex product line. Next slide. So before we get started, uh, just wanted to mention we're having an event uh, for our grand opening of our new Calgary office uh, that's happening on Thursday from 3 to 5 p.m. So Thursday, October 6th. Um, and, you know, all are welcome to come join and participate. Um, we're actually going to have Mariano on site in Calgary as well. Um, it's going to be based around our single access tracker product that we're uh, very excited about. We just acquired this back in November 2021. Um, so it's been a, um, you know, a new release for us. Um, and we just had it at RE plus in, in Anaheim, California as well for the solar show, but, uh, excited to show everyone that product line for those that may be interested. And again, October 6th, uh, from three to 5 PM and looking forward to seeing you there. Next slide. So some of the agenda for today, um, I'll give you a little bit of overview on polar racking, um, how the core flex is ideal for small and medium-sized projects, 
selecting the ideal foundation for your site conditions, which is another very important topic. And then at the end, we'll open it up for Q&A. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to enter them into the chat box. Uh, we'll try and handle all of the questions at the end, and we'll probably have about 15 or 20 minutes or so at the end of this hour-long presentation to um, you know, answer any and all of those questions. Next slide. So a little bit about polar racking. Uh, polar racking was started in 2009. We started in the Ontario feed-in tariff uh, market. Um, you know, there was a local need for uh, Ontario-built racking uh, products, uh, and that's kind of how polar racking was born. Um, we started out in the rooftop space doing ballasted and, and rail systems um, about five, six years ago, started in with ground mounts and kind of quickly um, moved on to carports and single axis tracker as well. And through those years with uh, all of our R&T and research and things like that have, um, you know, of course, uh, enhanced our product lines. Uh, through those years. So we're offering a very robust solution, uh, great technical support and so forth. We have over three gigawatts of experience, uh, actual installs in the field in North America. Uh, we do a lot in the Caribbean as well. Um, but, um, you know, over three gigawatts of experience of, of racking systems that have been deployed in, in many different markets and, and conditions um, with uh, very high success and almost no failure whatsoever to speak of. So really excited about that um, and really excited to deliver these high quality products here today. Uh, another thing to mention is our, our full uh, customer support, technical support. Um, so, you know, uh, we have the background here and expertise to help you with your products alongside e-call as well. Some products um, that we are offering today, uh, just to kind of give you the overview on polar racking. Again, Core Flex, which we will be speaking about today. This is our uh, residential and light commercial based product line. Basically, we say anything uh, up to a few hundred KW, around 500 KW or so, will fit into this uh, Core Flex product. So, anywhere from maybe 5 KW up to 500. Um, in the core flex product line um, and it's meant to be an easy product where it's easily deployable um, not much thinking or thought behind it as far as design work is concerned it's a one size fits all you know it's going to be work and you know it's going to be robust uh, in the field and again we'll show you that here today in our presentation our utility scale ground mount which is called the core um, so that again this is for any project size of 500 kil kilowatt or more. Um, so we have many sites deployed with, you know, 100, 200 megawatt sites with this core product. Uh, and that's our, our ground mount. Solar carports, which we like to call the shield. Uh, so solar carports are, are for parking lots or top of uh, parking deck canopies. Uh, we sometimes see them also on top of rooftop where uh, they want some sort of sun or shade structure. Um, we're able to deploy these types of designs here. And then, of course, again, our single axis tracker called Axis. Um, so this is a single axis tracker um, where we use a drive shaft. Instead of using a, a torque tube, uh, it gives you a higher degree of flexibility and adjustability on site. Um, so really great for harsh conditions, uh, tougher topography, uh, those types of things that that may be out there. Again, all comes with our engineering services, um, installation services, which we could offer, and project management services as well. So not just the product, but also services which are important and um, helping you become successful in these projects. So why select Polar Racking's Core Flex, uh, residential and light commercial ground mount, um, so there's a few different reasons here. Again, it's easy pre-engineered ground mount solution for uh, medium-sized projects. So it's, uh, again, that one size fits all kind of uh, mentality 
where we design, and we'll show you this, in a two by eight configuration. Um, everything is G90 galvanized steel, so you know it's strong and robust. Um, we are able to offer multiple uh, ground solutions from ground screws, helical piles, um, and even ballasted. Uh, you have integrated wire management solutions right within our C channels uh, that are there. So you could strap your wires to the C channels, protected from the sun and any weather elements. And then you'll also have um, water management uh, drip holes to allow the water to pass through. Um, and then, uh, you know, holes for uh, mounting solutions as well, such as uh, wire clips or, you know, zip ties or whatever you may be using in the field. Uh, minimal amount of posts per rack, which is only four posts. So again, only four posts, ground screws, grided pile, things like that. Um, you know, it's rated up to a 10% ground slope east to west. Um, if you have something more than that, always, again, reach out to eCall um, and, uh, you know, submit your design and we'll take a look at that. Um, if you could just back up one slide there, Janet. And then everything is certified to UL 2703, certified for Canada and the USA. Um, so everything's been uh, tested under wind tunnel testing. Um, we do give you a pre-engineered stamp package as well. Um, so uh, good to pull permits and uh, with your local jurisdictions. Next slide. So again, some of the highlights, uh, you have a, a two by eight, that's in portrait uh, configuration, uh, pre-stamped for the province that you may be in, east-west purlins for pre-punched holes for efficient wire management, as well as the water uh, mitigation as well. And uh, of course, everything is in stock at Ecol. So it's very simple, kitted solution where you could say, hey, um, you know, I have a 10 kW system. Um, these are the types of panels that I'm working on. And, um, you know, you could get a, a very simple and easy kit shipped to you um, that's easy to install and ready to go. Um, so it's right off the shelf. And um, again, ready to go. So it's as simple as that, really. Next slide. So we have all of our materials on our website, um, as well as eCall could definitely uh, share these with you uh, from data sheets, installation manuals, um, stamp top level drawings and racking and foundations. Um, we also provide a foundation guide, depending on what type of soil you may be seeing there. Um, you know, we can provide our foundation guide for you to help you select the right type of foundation. Um, and then, of course, you know, with our services, you know, always feel free again to reach out to eCall or, or Polar and, um, you know, we could go through the project together uh, with you. Uh, we also have a 10 year warranty document, um, which we will provide as well. Next slide. And so with this next slide, I'll pass it over to uh, Mariano Gaultieri, again, our engineering manager to speak more of some of these technical advantages. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Uh, first of all, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Okay, well, th thanks, Jonathan. So to carry on and get into the details of the core flex system, I guess, like, like I mentioned before, it's designed for a small to medium sized projects, right? And and there's lots of information available as, as you start thinking or developing or planning for, for the project, right? To help expedite that timeline from conception to implementation of the project, right? The data sheet is basically the, the first document that it's uh, available there that summarizes all the different aspects of, of the technology or the racking itself, right? Uh, I mean, like like we mentioned before, we comply with with different design uh, codes uh, for for different provinces and, and safety standard as UL twenty seven hundred three for bonding and grounding. 
It's a primarily a ground mount system, 10 years warranty, four posts per, per table distributed in, into two A-frames uh, at 30 degree tilt, uh, top clamping solution to improve uh, adjustability to different modules available out there in the market with integrated bonding and grounding. All this is part of the kit as, as supply, uh, suitable for multiple type of piles and foundations, right? Whether it's helical, ground screw, grouted piles, micro, micro piles, ballast uh, foundations, and whatnot, depending, there's all kind of variabilities within the soil. And there's all kind of suitability for different piles. And, and my colleague Keith will, will uh, expand further when it comes to foundation selection. Uh, but it's good to know that the system that we're considering here, it, it can easily integrate to either type of foundation, right? Uh, we mentioned wire management, uh, it's included, and for corrosion protection, our strategy is going with hot deep galvanized. So we have a minimum G90 corrosion protection with hardworks on Magni 656 coating, which is becoming uh, the standard coating or by excellence for all the solar industry out there, right? Uh, module compatibility, so this will give you a, a, a good sense of, of what can and cannot fit within within the, the racking. As you can see, module width being the most critical aspect up to 1.1 meters or, or 11, 12 millimeters. Uh, 72 cells module type mostly, but 60 cells can be dealt with if there's still some out there. 35, uh, 31 to 50 millimeters height on, on the frame. Uh, that, that we have different kits to accommodate different different heights. Um, next slide, please. Uh, sorry, Janet, next slide, please. Thank you. So part of the documentation that, that we mentioned that it's available as you uh, work throughout through the project is the pre-engineered package, right? So this is a an extract from, from that package. Uh, so basically you can see the, the, the design itself, footprint for, for the racking uh, construction A-frames. And, and more importantly, it would focus the attention on that, those three tables on the middle of the page type of thing. So, so we break down into different kits. We break down the, the CoreFlex product into different kits. Uh, the idea behind this is to facilitate the selection of the kit based on or driven by the module type or the module sizes that we're installing, right? Although the structure, it's all the same, all your roll forming components are, are, are the same on every kit. The only thing that changes is, is the bracketry and the, and the hardware around the module mounting, right? So larger modules may require slightly different fasteners on smaller modules type of approach, right? And uh, through on, on the right, this elongated table here, we go even through the process of, of pre-selecting or, or doing uh, the math for you in, in terms of how these modules are gonna be installed on the table, right? Uh, the table comes with pre punch rail, uh, rails, yeah? And uh, depending on the module width, uh, you need to relocate these, these modules within within the rail right so so the math is fairly straightforward but nevertheless i mean we go to to the one millimeter resolution for different module width to to make the process that much easier when it comes to install right and uh if if you look on the title block all the way far at the right there is a little bit of a loading chart we will go further in detail we'll come back to this but it's uh it's going to be important as, as we size the system and, and, and we determine what foundations are suitable for it. Uh, next page, please. So another page from that same package, right? So we get uh, the, the top view, side views on, and uh, ele different elevations here for the racking. So, so you can have at those early stages of planification on the process, you can look into footprints and, and, and pile locations and, and how much terrain you need for, you can start plotting the tables and the 
lay out and, and achieve your or or push your plan forward to to a development stage, right? Build the material components, like I said, all the structure, it's it's based on the same build material calculated uh, uh, with the maximum wind loads and, and snow loads that you can see uh, applicable for for all the provinces and uh, and it's just the hardware that gets that that changes uh, if we go next slide so now we're going into some of the other documentation that it's available uh, as well as, as as we work through this project which is the installation manual so these pages next few pages are coming from the installation manual directly right so it's a brief overview of what the racking is. So starting number one with the post, so you have uh, uh, the, the the two posts from front and rear, right? Uh, attached to to foundation at that point, and 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 from there it comes up the ground, and and the racking gets built on top. Then you have your north south beam that sits directly into the two posts, right? We'll talk about adjustability in in a minute. And uh, next uh, item number three is, is the brace, which basically it helps or, or maintain that stiffness required on, on the legs uh, to as part of our design to minimize steel, but yet increase uh, stiffness. So, so just a brief parenthesis here. So, so polar racking, uh, this, this pro, the core flex pro is a, that it's been on the making for for over 12 years now and with with constant updates and and upgrades right so some of these components i mean they're designed to to be the specific requirements as as the system is is loaded right uh, bracing is 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 one of those key components that that helps stiffening the, the piles right so it's a very important uh, part of the system uh, next one down the road is, is the east-west bracket, uh, which item number four. Although it's a fairly small component, uh, it, it's also a key factor on, onto this design for, for two purposes, not only because it helps during installation that you have a nice surface where you can install your rails and, and, and without having a two person holding the rails, you can you can shift it and, and position it where it needs to be with all kind of adjustability, right? But it's also due to the fact that it's bracing directly into the web of the rails that, that creates that additional stiffness that prevent or, 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 or improve that moment capacity on that connection, right? So every little component is, is being thought out uh, to the point that what's not required is being removed and what is really required is, is remaining there. It's not just be content in the product to create the minimum bill of material or the shortest bill of material possible, but, but leaving all the components that are truly required to achieve the performance and the, and the quality that we need to maintain throughout the life of the system, right? Uh, East-West beam item number five. So basically they, they go um, east to west as the name says there. Uh, and these are the beams that are, that are holding the modules directly right so all the module clampings happen directly on on these they come with an, a, a number of, of pre punch slots to accommodate different modules uh, dimensionally and also with regards of, of the pre punch holes for adjustability wire management uh, drain holes and all that that we mentioned earlier next down the road is item six and seven and sorry Item six and seven with with regards of the module clamps. So we have different clamps for the ends and for the middle. The middle interlock in between two modules, and, and the end clamp is just uh, at, at the end. And then the last on the list is the solar modules. Uh, obviously, these are not supplied with the, with the system, but but the system is designed based on these modules. Right. Next slide. So again, from the manual. Uh, in terms of adjustability, uh, for the foot bracket, we have up-down adjustability of two inches per, per leg on the north-south beam uh, down to the right. We have three and a half uh, 
inches uh, adjustability, right? Is west two inches and uh, is west bracket. There's an additional three quarters of an inch on adjustability. Now this is important when we're tackling uh, grades, right? We mentioned that this system can be up to 10% grade. This three quarter of an inch, although it seems that it is, is not much, is plenty to tackle the, the grade change and is critical as, as your rails or your east-west will be in a slight angle just to compensate for the grade, right? Uh, next slide, please. Foundations, will we will talk more in details. Uh, my colleague Keith will mention more in detail how to size the foundation, but this is just so we can see here all the different options that we have for foundations, like our system can be adapted to either a helical pile or a grouted post, driven post, the ground screw being ground screw actually the most uh, uh, popular foundation type as they are uh, very suitable for, for, for a large range of soil conditions. Uh, we typically have all these in, in stock. Uh, Precast ballast also a mass to a uh, solution for, for landfills and, 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 and other options where drilling or, or digging into the soil is, is, is not acceptable, right? So as you can see, uh, whatever uh, the soil conditions that you may have, I mean, we thought of a solution for that. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, wire management, uh, Features, uh, we use basically uh, the rails, the east-west rails as, as wire management. They can, they can be used, they're approved to be used as, as trays, right? So there's tight uh, locations, there's pre punch holes for, for ties. There's no additional cost, it's all part of the kit. And, and then uh, you can also jump cables from, from table to table as, as you build multiple tables on the one side. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, going a little bit more into the top clamp solution uh, that we mentioned before, this is key for adjustability when it comes to designing a, a system that is suitable for multiple type of, of modules in terms of dimension. Uh, top clamp is a very reliable and robust solution that has been tested uh, to all the loadings that, that we expect to see on this system and, and beyond those, those loadings and it's also been certified to, to UL standards. Uh, again, it's part of the kit and, and it comes with a grounding uh, washer to achieve uh, bonding and grounding within the structure from module to structure. Right, so the whole system, it, it's, uh, it's UL uh, certified not just the module, not just the clamping, but the, the whole racking. Uh, next, please. Okay, uh, now we're gonna start jumping a little bit into the foundation designs. Uh, so no kit, if you're gonna take it from here. Sounds good. Okay, uh, so this part is uh, normally done with PRI, but as we mentioned earlier, they had their big opening this week, so I'm going to take over for them. Um, one advantage to the CoreFlex system, as was previously called PRUD, um, big advantage to the system is it comes pre-engineered. So what that means is every foundation option, uh, there is a solution for. So what you do is take your own uh, engineering problem, take your site, figure out what soils you have, what conditions you have, some uh, locations you're not allowed to penetrate uh, surface, so you need a ballasted system. Some areas, uh, ground screw will not work, um, so you need something like a driven or uh, another option. So what you have to do is do your kind of own evaluation. So based on what properties you have, what snow loads, wind loads, and frost steps for your area, you're able to determine what foundation will be approved for the uh, core flex system. So what we look at is um, the lateral loads, snow loads as well. So next slide. So here's a standard 
uh, configuration for what we look for for the loads we put on our system. Uh, again, depending on where you are, these might increase or decrease. But this is a fairly standard uh, load on the system. So we test up to 42 or 32 kilonewtons axial, 51 for the dual post rear. So it does have a bunch of different options. We take a look at every single option and how it, that affects your foundation. Um, these are just more for your information, uh, but you see the largest effect on most of these is the axial uplift on the rear leg, and that would most likely be uh, wind and frost load acting on it. So next page, please. So what we have here is just a, a general uh, sample of what we would have you guys test for. So if you take your area, we took two areas in Alberta, Edmonton, Alberta, and Pincher Creek. Uh, snow load for Edmonton is just under 3 kPa, and wind load is just over 4.5. Uh, that means the system is compatible, safe, and will be fully stamped for that design. In Pincher Creek, uh, the snow load is less than outside the graph completely. So the snow load is just below 3 kPa, but the wind load is over 0. 0.7. So Pincher Creek is one of the only places in Canada that we will not uh, supply the CoreFlex system too, just because of the requirements for it. You can also use this exact same table to figure out your embedment requirements for your foundation on. Okay, the next page, please. There we go. So uh, here you see the website, the climateatlas.ca slash maps, Canada Plus. So when you get your system, we give you this website and you can just check your site. So from here, you can find out what your wind load is, your snow load, uh, your number of freezing days to see what the frost cycles are for your site. Uh, so you use, for example, here's Edmonton, the frost cycles, uh, you're looking at around, how would that be? Uh, so 17 or 1976 to 2005 would be your main frost cycle where you're looking at you know a few frost cycles in a year but not that bad pincher creek if you look at it actually doesn't have as bad as a frost cycle or freezing days however for that site it is the wind that is the requirements for it so again edmonton has a snow rating of 1440 uh, pincher or a frost cycle rating of 1440 pincher creek has a frost cycle rating of 820. And these are all you can find directly on that website. And you'll get that number directly from the website to use in the determination table, which will be on the next slide. Okay, so when you're doing your own desktop evaluation, you wanna look at uh, elevation of groundwater table, presence of cobbles or surface obstructions. Uh, normally boulders at surface means there's boulders below surface. Uh, so that's one thing you wanna check for. There are different limitations to each foundation option. So if you have cobbles, a significant amount of cobbles, ground screws are not very feasible because they don't bite into cobble very well. Uh, if you have larger boulders, you can't use the helical because the helical will get clogged up by the boulder and not go into embedment. Um, if you don't have either of those, ground screws is typically your better option for the smaller scale systems uh, because even though there's more foundations with the ground screw than there is a single helix, uh, you're able to have smaller equipment install and less mobilization cost. You're not going to mobilize a 30 ton excavator to install four piles for a small system, but having a skid steer on site that can do uh, act as both a ground screw installation uh, machine as well as moving your equipment around and materials around is very practical. So another thing we want to do is evaluate bedrock elevation. So if you have bedrock just below surface, then obviously you're going to have an either non-penetrating option or you have to drill into the bedrock. And then the other one would be um, what subsoil surfaces are there or subsurface soils are there. So if you have a wetter soil, different kinds of soils will have different acts on frost loads um, and act differently on the foundations. Next page. So as you can see, uh, if there's groundwater present, you can't do a micropile. Uh, the ground, the concrete will not set. 
low grade uh, if it's underwater uh, or it'll be too diluted to have a good strong strength. However, you can put it in a helical or a ground screw. Uh, if there's surface obstructions, a helical will most likely not go in. Uh, like I said, there's a single large blade. Every rock it hits, it normally stalls out or needs to be adjusted. So from the ground screw, again, if you look all the way across, it's the most ideal for the most common sites. And that is very prevalent for the core flex system. Uh, just again, because even though there's typically more foundations with the ground screw, uh, it's easier to install and it's a lot more versatile. So if you have a bedrock site, you can pre-drill uh, with a soft sedimentary rock. Or again, if you have boulders on site, you can also pre-drill and get the ground screw through the boulder, uh, but not with the helical. Uh, so again, we find most commonly the ground screw is most uh, common for a uh, core flex system. Sorry, I keep trying to call it Terra UD uh, core flex system. So we have options as well as uh, in Alberta right now, we have suppliers with ground screws, the ability to install them. And uh, so if that's something that you guys are looking for as well, we do have uh, helicals out there as well. But uh, like I said, typically, especially out in Alberta, your ground screw will be your most dependable option. You obviously have the sites that are, um, yeah, sorry. You have sites that are uh, softer as well that helical will work better for, but uh, the ground screws, uh, Again, I believe eCall can get them for you as well. Uh, but let's uh, just go to the next slide. I was just going to uh, interject a bit there, Keith. Yep. Uh, so there's a machine shown in the background. Um, but I get this question a lot um, is about how to install these ground screws. If if you're you know installing it or you're not quite familiar with um, uh, the installation of a ground mount. So... Do you want to kind of speak about like, you know, we see a lot of folks out there with, um, you know, mini excavator or Bobcat with an auger attachment and what that kind of looks like and just kind of walk them through that a bit before we get to the questions. Yeah, no problem. So what you're seeing there is actually a site from a core site. Uh, the difference between the core sites and the core flex sites is core flex sites normally finish with the ground screw at grade. So you're normally dealing with an eight to 10 foot uh, ground screw. So they can normally operate on a bucket mounted or a skid steer mounted uh, option and drive through with a, a skid steer, uh, which again, this is the advantage to the ground screws for the smaller sites. Uh, you don't need to have an excavator and a skid steer. You just need to have a skid steer. Uh, what you're seeing there again is um, a PRU or a core system where they are being left about five to six feet above grade so that the system is mounted above grade, whereas the core flex mounts at grade. Uh, there is a single post option. So if you are doing a helical option, uh, you would have the five foot uh, final height, but normally they're a five and a half inch diameter helical pile required to be able to clamp on the top half. So that uh, single post option is a fairly new option that we're offering. Uh, it's been anticipated for quite a while, but we finally have it. So that's something that eCall hopefully is excited about as well. So if you do have the ability to install uh, helical piles, which are traditionally single post, uh, then you can actually have that option as well. So that's something to look forward to there. So traditionally for a smaller site, you can get away with a skid steer mounted option bigger sites are normally helical or excavator mounted to get the extra reach because you have the five to six extra feet sticking out of above grade. And uh, if the folks don't have their own machinery, is this something that uh, they could source locally? What, what do you usually see on that, Keith? Yeah, so most standard augers can be adapted to install uh, a ground screw. There are people out there who already have all the adapters made and ready mm -hmm. to go. Uh, so there, there are a ton of options. Um, we recommend using a ground screw we've supplied, but they can go on any design foundation as long as it meets our requirements. Um, there is a, a decent sized table that comes with it when you're picking your ground screw. You go through and look at it, again, based on soil types, they'll give you a torque requirement. So if you're able to uh, meet the 9,000 foot pounds of torque, or 900, sorry, not 9,000, you'll snap them, uh, 900 foot pounds of torque with a ground screw at a minimum embedment of six feet, let's say, then you're, you're uh, perfectly fine. So you do need someone who's capable of recording the torques uh, for the foundation purposes, 
but uh, on that point, it is a fairly, let's say simple, but common uh, application to install a ground screw. Awesome, thank you, Keith. And I believe with that, uh, we can move on to questions. Um, so I'm just gonna pull this up here. So first question was from Jay Nash. Do you make any racking in aluminum or stainless steel for coastal regions? Uh, Mariana, you wanna take that one? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, we do, we do not, unfortunately, we don't deal with, with stainless steel or, or aluminum on, on, on the flex, on the core flex system. Uh, it's our approach is is hot dig galvanized. Now we can uh, attain levels of hot dig galvanization with the stainless steel fasteners that we can recommend for coastal areas, and and we've been doing that on on the Caribbean uh, for for many years now. So if you have a project that is coastal and you need some specific requirements you know please reach out to ecall and then um you know we'll get together on that and, and see you know how to accommodate with uh you know higher levels of galvanization or something like that next question is from greg seed is core flex to replace prud or just renaming same question for core and pru yes essentially we went through a new a renaming process so uh, Core is replacing PRU. The product did not change, just the name change. So Core is now uh, PRU. Core Flex is PRUD. Um, you know, PRP for carports is now called the Polar Shield. Um, and Access has been Access uh, throughout since last year. Would you recommend placing dummy modules in unused areas of the rack or just leave it blank? Mariano, you want to take that one as well? Yeah, uh, either either way is an acceptable solution. Uh, uh, dummy module is, is certainly more appealing aesthetically. The point of view, I mean, in terms of, of loading, it, it doesn't really have any impact on, on the system. Uh, I mean, for as long as we're talking uh, one or, or two modules out of the system and we're talking half of the modules that are of the system, then it, it, it's a different aspect because there's an unbalanced scenario that comes into play. Uh, but, but other than that, I mean, if, if typically would you let one, one or two modules out because you want to even out your string size, that, that's doable either way. Great. Thank you, Mariano. Uh, next question was, many of the new modules are coming in above 1,112 millimeters in width, plans to adjust module compatibility. Yes, we are currently working on that. Um, we're essentially going to make the tables a little bit longer and, you know, adding some additional hole patterns and things like that. Um, that will be ready by next year, January, February next year. Um, we, we will have a revision to our, our core flex standard product. Next question was from Ross Thiessen. In table three, there are different intermodule spaces noted. So installers are to gap the mid clamps and try to maintain a straight row. Table three. Yeah, uh, so... Go this ahead. is all from from the from the engineer package. Uh, yes, there is a, already a, a, a set distance on the intermodule clamp that twenty one millimeters, right? So that's set. So once that distance is larger, uh, yes. Yeah, so basically, what you need to do is just expand a little bit further than what that tab on on the clamp is it's is provided for. And this is just to maintain. Uh, the alignment throughout the whole to maintain equal gaps throughout the whole uh, rail throughout the whole array. Perfect. Thank you, Mariano. Um, next one is a long one from Simron. Let's see. Uh, what is this? Eastman has a shop floor sheet metal. I think this is more of an advertisement than a question. 
Um, I think that was it. I don't see any other questions here. Um, Jay, any uh, closing remarks? Yeah, great presentation, you guys. Yeah, first of all, thank you very much to Jonathan, Mariano, Keith, Janet in the background. We really appreciate the efforts you guys put in here. Thank you to everyone that attended. Again, we do stock the Core Flex here at eCall Electric, of course, among many other products and services. So please consider us and moving forward. Again, any one of our team members can help you. You can reach out to me directly. Again, just excited about the future, uh, the strength of our partnership with Polar Racking. And uh, again, a lot of optimism and excitement for the future. So thank you to the Polar team and thank you everyone for attending. Looks, looks like we have a late question there, which uh, I can field for this one. Um, so yeah, so there's a couple the question. Let's read out the question, uh, Keith. Yep. Uh, so Raver Weeks, uh, what type of ground mound found the what type of ground foundation would you recommend for two foot of soil above limestone? We are currently using grounded piles. Go ahead, Keith. Right. So here you're, you're you have a couple options. Uh, quickest one is just a ballasted system. Uh, so we do have a geo ballast system, which I didn't really mention much about before, which is what's uh, called a Gabion basket, which uses local stone to hold down the whole system. So it's uh, imagine just a cage with this uh, system built in it, and then you weigh it down with uh, ballasted rock. Uh, the other option is a ground screw. So traditionally, if you have a three and a half inch ground screw, you can pilot hole with a three inch uh, down hole hammer. And then the ground screw will bite into the softer limestone and hold on very well. Uh, so those are your, your two main options. Uh, grouted, I can definitely understand, is extremely expensive. Uh, but if you use a ground screw option, uh, that will cut back on concrete, especially if you're in a remote location and, and it's difficult to get the concrete to, um, as well as, uh, again, not needing the multiple machines. You just have the small down the hole hammer, uh, blast your three inch hole through, which basically blasts out to about a three and a quarter inch hole. And then the ground screw bites in with the last uh, half inch of teeth. So that's typically what we'll see on a soft uh, limestone site. Amazing. Thank you, Keith. Um, any other questions out there before we wrap it up? I don't see any others coming in. Um, so again, thank you so much, Jay, for your partnership. Uh, super excited for the future with eCall here. Um, folks, if you have any questions or product needs, please do reach out to eCall uh, and your representative from the team there. Um, they're very familiar with our products again and um, able to support you. Um, and we look forward to working with everyone here and. Uh, Thanks again. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye.